Is Microsoft disabling VBA and macros in all of their Office products? That's a question I got this week, and we're going to deep dive and explore that thoroughly in this episode of Excel VBA is Fun. So since the 1990s, macros have been a part of the Microsoft Office suite. And since the 90s, unscrupulous jerk dirtbags have been using them to put malware and bad code in there that could take over or just do bad things to your computer to wipe out a folder here and there or just take over control. And Microsoft is finally cracking down on that. So let's explore this question a little bit further. The short answer is no, they're not disabling all macros for everything in Office. There's too many of us that depend very heavily on using macros for all kinds of things. So what is this all about? What is the new change that's coming? Well, it's important, but it's not as scary as it may seem on the surface. So Microsoft is rolling out new security features, and we know why. We talked about this. Unscrupulous dirtbags have been putting viruses on things since the 90s, and IT people are tired of folks downloading things from the internet and just running them without vetting them first. It can be a major headache, and I totally get that, and I totally support this change. So where and when is this occurring? So here are the, the five apps that it's happening to. It's going to happen with Visio, Excel, of course, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, and finally Access. So these five are the only ones that it's happening to. The other Office products it won't be affecting. Now as for when, here's the schedule lineup. For the current channel, for preview and regular current channel, uh, the newest version that's coming out in April so just a month away is going to be released and then you'll see in the next few months after that it's going to start rolling out to the other enterprise level channels as for the office ltsc which is the lifetime version for certain government organizations and other organizations it just says to be determined same for office 2021 19 16 and 13. now as for excel for mac android Office on iOS or Office on the web, they're just flat out saying it's not going to happen on those versions. So if you have one of those, you don't have to worry about even seeing this or dealing with this. Now, what does this look like? Here's a preview of one of the pop-ups that comes up. It says there's a security risk. Microsoft has blocked macros from running because the source of the file is untrusted. And basically, if you click learn more, it's just going to take you to a page that tells you how to unblock the file and why you should be a little bit more cautious. And it makes sense for them to throw this out there because there's been a study done that said 40 to 45 percent of malware can come from Microsoft Office products from unscrupulous people who have their macros assigned to do terrible things to your computer. So um, obviously we want people to be a little bit more cautious and a little bit more aware of this to learn how to vet the code at least before you actually enable the code. So this is what it's talking about. Now, is that happening to every Excel file, every Word file, all that? Uh, no, it's not happening to that. It only happens when you download a file from the Internet. So if you get an attachment on your email or if something comes from a download link from some website, then it is flagged, and it has been for years, with something called the Mark of the Web, M-O-T-W. So if something has the mark of the web, it's simply an attribute that's added to Windows files whenever they come from the internet. It's just a little flag that tells your computer, hey, this came from the internet. It came from not someone in our office, not some file that's been hanging around on your computer for a long time that you made, but it came from somewhere else. So hey, let's maybe just flag it in case you need to be careful about that. So even then, not all of those files from the internet are going to be flagged or going to be having this warning. Let me explain it. So here is the logic. You download a file from the internet or you get it from an attachment. And so you open that file and it has the mark of the web, the MOTW attribute on it. Uh, so that's the starting point. Now, is this file from a trusted location? Meaning... So this is one of the folders on your computer that you can use to tell Microsoft Office that this location is safe. This is in your trust center. So anything that goes in one of these folders is okay. To add a trusted location, you can actually go to File and then Options, click on Trust Center, finally Trust Center Settings, 
and then add it to your trusted locations by hitting add a new location. Again, anything in that folder is going to be fine. So if it's in that folder, then yes, macros are enabled. But if no, if it's not in there, it's going to keep on trying other things. So, well, is this file digitally signed or by a trusted publisher? If it is, then again, macros are enabled. It's not going to pop up that scary warning. If you need to know more about creating a digital signature, getting a code signing signature for your documents, we have more information on my website, Excel VBA is fun. We have a full course on the subject if you want to learn how to get certified and things like this. If you already have a signature, it's really easy to sign a document. You just go to the Visual Basic Editor by hitting Alt F11 and then you're going to go to tools and click on the add a digital signature it's pretty easy you just find the location you need to go to browse to it and hit OK and then enter your signature password now if it's not code signed and it's not in your trusted location folder. Now it's going to check for cloud policies or ADMX or group policies. Now these are Windows Server and Active Domain Services type templates and policies that IT folks implement for you. So they are over you to protect the company. These are not things that you can easily override. So, uh, and nor should you if this is your company's policy. So if your policy is allowing macros, then macros are allowed. If your policy says that macros are blocked, then macros are going to be blocked. And even furthermore, the trust bar is going to come up and say that this is blocked content. Not learn more, but flat out this is blocked content. So that is up to your company and your administration at that point. If there's no policy in place, it's going to keep searching for other things. For example, is this a previously trusted document? So if you have a specific document that's trusted rather than just a whole folder that's trusted, then it'll check that. And if that's okay, then of course macros are enabled. Now if not, if it's none of those things, then this is the new default that's going to happen. As long as the macro enabled workbook came from the internet, then it's going to have that little warning that says, hey, macros are not enabled right now and you're gonna get the trust board that says learn more now how do you resolve this oh my gosh this is so scary no it's really easy anything with a mark of the web is really easy to deal with so all you have to do is right click on the document go to properties and unblock it in fact we're gonna do a technical demonstration to show you that really quick so let me get out of here and show you really quick so this is a file that I got from tiny PNG I was just shrinking some files and I already unzipped it and everything's working absolutely fine however it did come from the internet so it's got the mark of the web on it no big deal if I right click and go to properties I can view more information about that so normally you'll have you won't have this if you have just a file from your computer but this one is the mark of the web security says this file came from another computer meaning the internet and might be blocked to help protect the computer it's not really blocked but all you have to do is click unblock and then say OK or hit apply and then OK which is the same thing and then bam now it's fine now in the case of a zip file it's already pretty well fine anyways but as you can see that thing went away the mark of the web thing has been approved it's unblocked so that's the same thing you do with an Excel or a Word document that you trust and that you've already vetted now going back to our PowerPoint here we have a few more tips and these are Microsoft recommendations in fact the ones that happen whenever you click learn more on this scary new button but it's good for us to review these tips Number one, were you even expecting to receive a file that had macros on it? So don't open a file attachment if you weren't expecting it. A lot of phishing attacks most commonly will actually come from a person or organization that you trust. They can slap your email or your friend's email on it in an effort to get you to open them. But if you weren't expecting something like that, maybe email them back or call your friend and say, What's this? Why do you randomly send this? Number two, a common tactic of attackers is to create some pretense like, oh, we're canceling your order. Just click on this Excel file with a macro. Does that make sense at all? Uh, or, hey, read this legal document in order to uh, accept our terms. Why would that be on a Word document with macros in it if you're just reading stuff? That's a red flag. Don't open it. Don't do it. No legitimate company is going to make you open an Excel file to cancel an order. Um, you don't need macros just to read a document in Word or PowerPoint. Okay, 
Number three, if you download a file from a website, you may see pop-ups or other messages encouraging you to enable active content. These are also common tactics of hackers and should make you suspicious that the file is actually unsafe. Maybe you didn't think of that, but now hopefully it'll be a little bit more obvious to you and your people, so they'll be a little bit more cautious with that. Now, here's some more really cool tips. I'm going to show you how to open a file to inspect and look through the code without allowing the code to run. So in this case, we have a sample file right here. It's a macro-enabled workbook, and you'll notice that a pop-up occurs every time I open this document because that is, that's telling us that macros are definitely running on this document. In fact, I have something on the workbook open event. That means it's running something, in this case just a simple message box, but it's opening a macro every time I open this file. So let's do that one more time. Double-click on it. You'll notice the pop-up occurs right now hello there it says okay now here's how you do this and I'm gonna leave the instructions over here in case you're wanting to follow along but essentially it looks like a lot of steps but it's really easy so you're gonna open up a brand new instance of Excel you're gonna click on this open button right here and then you're gonna to go to browse you're not gonna click on any of those files even if they're they were the file that you wanted then you're gonna to go to the folder or wherever the file is you're not gonna double click on it you're not gonna open it right now here's the magic you do a single click on it okay just to select it then you're going to hold shift while you're holding shift you're going to right click on it see I still have shift held down you're not gonna hit open you're gonna hit select when you hit select you wait a few seconds now I can let go of shift. I've been holding it this whole time. I just let go of it. Okay. Now you notice it didn't say hello there. No pop-ups occurred. Now I can vet my code. I'm going to hit Alt F11. That's Alt and F11. And now it'll open up the Visual Basic Editor. I can explore the code, but it didn't run the code that occurs whenever the workbook opens with this message box saying hello there. That did not occur. So I'm protected from maybe some unscrupulous macro that's like trying to go in there and wipe out my whatever hard drive or do terrible things. I know that this is very safe. It's a message box that happens when the workbook opens. So that's not going to try to destroy my computer. Let's look for other macros. Is there any in Sheet 1? Any in Sheet 2? Nope, those are clean. How about Module 1? Oh, there's only one macro in here. That's really, really safe. There's only a little variable that fills up with a number. It doesn't even go anywhere or into any sheets or anything in the in the file system object. So it's clean, and I'm going to say this is fine. But that's how you can check your code. So that's a, hopefully a very useful tip to you. Back to this really quick. We have some final tips for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more great tips from our channel. High five someone today. It makes you feel good. makes them feel good too. I don't care if you feel like a dork. Be a dork a little bit. It's fine. Hug your parents if you can. And finally, join our growing Excel Ninjas Facebook group. It's free to join. We have lots of really cool tips and tricks. We have a lot of really great people in there that are joining that help each other out. And we have articles. We have exclusive trainings and uh, membership benefits and stuff. So go to ExcelVBAisFun.com slash ninja to join that. If you want to learn more about Excel VBA, check out our channel here, click on some other videos, and go to ExcelVBAisFun.com for more resources as well as our premium course library. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching.